Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner, and today is the Women's Olympic Road Race 2021. 137 kilometers, about 85 miles in length. Now, it's gonna be a stellar Dutch team at today's race. We're talking Van den Bregen, Vollering, Van Vluten, and Voss. They're all the V's, right? So it's difficult to say, but they're all fantastic riders. I mean, we're talking riders who list of championships and world championships is off the chart. Vollering is the newest of the of the four there, and she got done winning Liege, best done Liege earlier this year in fantastic style, winning in a sprint with help from her teammate. Now today's race, hot and humid, so any kind of effort is always gonna have an effect on everybody's form. Now when the racing starts, right away, five riders get off. Pischa, Oberhauser, Kaisenhofer, Lauser, and Shapira. These five will go up the road and the Dutchies aren't doing anything in behind. Now the Dutch team, they rode for 10 kilometers through neutral section right at the front of the field. When the racing actually started, the Dutch team were back there at the cars. Like I've never seen this particular tactic where you're so solid and the strongest team. And I mean, we're talking a team that can rival the Sky Train that's won back seven Tour de France championships, now Enos. We're talking about that kind of dominance that we saw at the Tour de France from Sky. That's what you're seeing out of these four ladies at this race. Their strength in numbers is absolutely amazing. So when they went through the 10 kilometers in neutral section, all at the front, I thought for sure we'd see some action out of these ladies when the racing started. Now kilometers zero hits, the break of five goes up the road and they're given massive amount of time. But every time when I'm seeing the Dutch riders, they're always either back at the car or at the back of the peloton, never at the front and that gap is just increasing. It's going five minutes, six minutes, seven, eight, goes above 10 minutes. And we're talking about an 85 mile race and they're above 10 minutes with still only 60 miles left in the race. So they got a great chance of going the whole distance. Now behind, the German team did hop on the front multiple times throughout the first part of this race, but without any help coming from any other teams, especially the Dutch riders, the German team would just shut it down. Whatever gains that were made on the break of five, now they'd lose and that time would go back up over 10 minutes. In my mind, when I'm watching this, I can't understand what the Dutch team's doing. When you have a star-studded, absolutely blazing quality riders as the Dutch team, you got to put one on the front and ride to keep that gap at a measurable distance when you're only talking about a 137 kilometer race. With 65 kilometers to go, Emma Norsgaard crashes and what I believe is probably the exact same thing that caused the men's race yesterday. She got in the, caught in the crack that's going down the center of the road, almost looks like the exact same spot to tell you the truth that the men crashed at yesterday. Behind, Van Vluten has no choice. She goes straight into the rider and tumbles over, doesn't get hurt, hops back up on her bikes and their bikes are a little tangled so the mechanic runs in there and changes it. Now when I dissect the crash, she, it looks like she has plenty of time to go left or go right. But the problem is if she goes right, she's gonna get herself involved with the crack in the road that caused the crash to begin with. If she goes left, she's gonna have to veer hard left and then there's the railing there on the bridge where the crash is taking effect at. So she chooses to get on the brakes, runs into Emma and then falls over the bars and the bikes are tangled up. She's okay, she'll get back on her bike and back in the race. Now we'll see her a couple kilometers later and she's talking to her team car. When she's talking to the team car, you gotta believe they're asking, hey, are you okay? How are you after the crash? Okay, you're good, these are the tactics. Now the brake is up the road and we're talking about six, seven, eight minute lead to the group up front. Now that group of five had turned into a group of three now with Plisha, Kaisenhofer, and Shapira. Those three are riding strong and all rotating well together. Now Kaisenhofer does something strange. She's in a break of three now, the other two have been dropped, Instead of calling up her car to come up to the group of three and then feeding from the car, she's dropping about 200 meters behind the group of two. So she'll drop off and feed from the car. That effort she has to do just really wasn't required. She could have stayed in the group, called the car up, and gotten a feed. Instead, she drops back and has to spend a lot of energy to get back to her two breakaway companions up the road. She will, she'll get in there, and the three will work solid together until later in the race. Now behind, Van Vluten, after talking with her team car, will get back to the peloton, and immediately the Dutch riders finally start attacking. One, two, three, four, and everyone, till finally Van Vluten gets up the road with about 55 kilometers left in the race. 
Now this is kind of another strange tactic from the Dutchies, in my opinion. They hadn't done any work throughout this race. They let the brake get massive time gaps. Now you're talking about the three, reader, three leaders have a six and a half minute lead, and here's Van Vluten going solo. At no point in time would you ever have a break of three riders up the road at six and a half minute, and then be a solo rider and think, I'm gonna bridge across to that before we get to the finish line. She takes off at 55K, she's going solo. The race behind just blows up. 20 riders will go over the top of that climb with Van Vluten solo trying to chase the three leaders. Now behind in the group of 20, they'll slow down and the main guys who have all gotten dropped will get back to the front group. So basically the ladies are all back intact as the peloton as a whole. Now remember, only 67 riders started today's race. One thing to keep in mind, there are no race radios at the Olympics. I brought that up yesterday, the butterfly effect during the men's race. In the women's race, this is going to play a part because already everything I've seen out of the Dutch riders their racing tactics is just absolutely knuckleheads. I can't explain any of it, and I was in awe watching the race the whole time. With them starting the first 10 kilometers in the neutral at the front, and then once the racing started, giving the breakaway over 10 minutes, and now never riding on the front, then when they finally get back on the front, they're actually attacking and going solo up the road, trying to close a six and a half minute gap. Now with about 40 kilometers to go, Kaisenhofer will take off from her two breakaway companions and she's going solo. Now this is a gutsy move from the Austrian. She's taken off solo with more than 25, 25 miles of racing while getting chased by the legendary rider Van Vluten behind. Now one thing to point out, the gap isn't coming down that fast to, on Van Vluten. She gained about a minute, minute and a half on that group of three right away, but after that it's kind of stabilized. And so we're talking about a solid five minute lead up there for the Austrian rider that's now solo. Van Vluten will get caught after 25 kilometers of riding solo from the group behind. And still the Dutch riders all intact, all four riders in the front group, they're still not riding to catch the front breakaway rider, Kaisenhofer, who's up the road going solo and looking strong on the pedal. Now just behind her is the two riders that she dropped, Pista and Shapira. Those two riders are working well together, but the legs are starting to die. The group behind with the, all the Dutch riders in there who still aren't working solid together, they're attacking left and right with all four of them trying to get up to the two leaders in front. Now remember, never, never have they ridden throughout this whole race as a group on the front, just either attacking or sitting on the back. It isn't until almost eight kilometers to go that the Dutch riders finally all get on the front and start pulling back the two riders in front of them. The problem is there's still another rider up the road. The Austrian rider, she is going away and flying on the pedals, looking solid every time the cameras come back to her. She'll ride away solo all the way to the line to take a gold medal on today's women's road race. Now behind the two leaders get caught with about six kilometers to go. The Dutch riders start attacking hard and Van Vluten is flying solo to the line with about 1.5 kilometers to go. Just behind her is the Italian rider, Longo Bergini, who's trying to chase her down. The problem is she believes she's trying to win gold. She'll cross the line for silver, holding off the Italian rider, Longo Borghini, at the line. Now, Van Vluten had a fabulous ride in terms of effort on today's stage. Their tactics, I thought, were horrendous, but now we start to understand why the tactics were so bad and why it took the whole team getting on the front at eight kilometers instead of talking 55 kilometers back there trying to chase down the Austrian rider. Van Vluten came across the line thinking she won gold, which means they thought they were chasing two riders in front at a minute and a half, two minute gaps and not chasing a solo rider that was way up there at five, five and a half minutes when Van Vluten had gotten caught with 25 kilometers to go. Now, this is crazy and in my mind why race radios should always be allowed in the race. They could have been told and warned about the crack in the road when Van Vluten crashed at about 65 kilometers to go and Van Vluten and the breakaway riders and the field with the Peloton riders could have all been told the right time, right gap times up to the leaders of today's race. And the fiasco at the finish line, sprinting for second, thinking it was gold, would have never happened. Now it's the butterfly effect, so I'm always gonna point it out. The beginning of the race with the Dutch team, I didn't like their tactics, I thought they were knuckleheads. 
Then at the finish, it made a little sense of why they took so long to get to the front. They thought they were racing for gold when really it was for silver. Now, the Austrian rider, Kaisenhofer, did a spectacular ride and she deserved gold on today's stage. Would be nicer in my book if it came without the drama, but I'll take gold any day of the week. So if I'm Kaisenhofer, I'm happy. I'm sitting on the podium. I'm holding gold for life. Congratulations, Austria. You got a gold medal in today's Olympic road race. It was a fabulous race to watch the drama. Whenever it's this kind of chaos, it always makes for good racing. But man, I was pulling my hair out throughout, throughout today's race, wondering what was going on from kilometer zero all the way to the finish of today's stage. Tactically, it was just a bunch of knuckleheads that had put stuff together. I'm going to blame it all on the officials or whoever was supposed to have the time board checked back there and get everybody the correct time and correct gaps to all the breakaway riders. Nonetheless, I enjoyed the race. It was a fabulous cover, the women's Olympic road race. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon.